it's my pleasure to welcome you to this event today where we will explore how sustainability indicators can drive better decision making with a focus on practices in Argentina and Brazil. Before we get started, let me just run through a few technical details. Firstly, this webinar will be moderated in English, but we also have presentations in Spanish and Portuguese to facilitate the interaction between our panelists and our audience. Interpretation in the three languages will be available during the webinar. You can enable it by clicking interpretation at the bottom of your screen and selecting the language that best suits you. Secondly, we will really welcome any questions you have for any of our speakers or about the program itself. So please post these questions in the Q&A box as shown on the slides. For those of you who don't already know, Urban Shift is a joint initiative funded by the Global Environment Facility and led by the United Nations Environment Program in partnership with the World Resources Institute, C40 Cities, ICLEI, the United Nations Development Program, the World Bank, and the Asian Development Bank. Urban Shift focuses on transforming 23 cities in nine countries through integrated urban planning approaches and building capacity to shift to greener and healthier economies. For the next hour, we will have a series of presentations and discussions with experts on the topic of how sustainability indicators can drive better decision making and the lessons from the latest practice in Argentina and Brazil. So this is how our event is organized for today. I will be moderating the discussion and then we will have two sets of interventions from Argentina. The first one presenting the Sustainable Cities Guide from Florencia Mitchell and Lucia Neukirk. The second one from the city of Cañada de Gómez, and in which we have the mayor, Stella Clerici, and Gabriela Sabatini presenting about their experience. And then we will move to Brazil uh, with a presentation from Clerici Mayer on the Sustainable Cities Development Index and uh, lessons learned uh, from Niteroi, from Luis Ferraro. We will close the event with a Q&A session uh, with questions from the public. But before starting, let's think about a little bit about the context for this discussion. The last two decades have seen a rampant rise in environmental challenges being faced by cities and countries globally. In Latin America, challenges related to air pollution, waste disposal, depletion of natural resources, frequent natural disasters, and the loss of biodiversity, amongst others, have been increasing. Meanwhile, deep economic and social challenges are still present. Compounding this already complex scenario, the growing threat of climate change urges the Latin American cities to craft effective policies that promote sustainable urban development. In this context, there are some opportunities. The use of data by local decision makers has the potential to better inform governments, practitioners, and stakeholders on urban policy plans, but also on priorities for the strategic projects that can have multiple benefits in the environmental, social, and economic realm. Evidence-based decision-making and data also allow for measurement of targets and results. To pursue this shift in the way planning is done in cities towards evidence-based decisions, cities need innovative, agile, and practical management tools that allow for comprehensive multi-sectoral diagnosis that helps to identify strategic priorities and projects to build resilient, inclusive, and sustainable cities. In the past months, the Ministry of Environment and Sustainable Development of Argentina has launched a simplified diagnostic tool for local governments to evaluate urban sustainability as part of an integrated planning process. The tool is called Sustainable Cities Guide and it aims to generate information for municipalities' decision making processes, prioritization of projects, and public management. In parallel, the Sustainable Cities Institute in Brazil, through their Sustainable Cities program, has launched the Cities Sustainable Development Index that aims to establish the SDGs as a useful and effective tool for public management and political action in Brazilian municipalities. With these two tools, local governments in Argentina and Brazil are being able to better communicate and plan actions to switch their paths towards more sustainable urban development. Some of them are leading this shift, like Niteroi in the state of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, and Cañada de Gómez in the province of Santa Fe, Argentina. So we are all eager to learn how these tools were designed and are being implemented. 
to start our webinar, I would like to invite Florencia Mitchell, the National Director of Climate Change, and Lucia Neukirk, the Sustainable Cities Specialist from the Ministry of Environment and Sustainable Development of Argentina, to share their experiences with us. Florencia, Lucia, the floor is yours. Muchas gracias, Mariana. Buenos días a, a todas y a todos. Thank bueno, you, Mariana. As Mariana was just saying, we will begin with the Sustainable Cities Guide, which is something that we created in the Ministry of Environment. And this is within the state policy and the public policy that we have in different levels that are present in our country. So as part of the integration of the public policy, we have the access of sustainable development and everything that has to do with the contact with the different municipalities. So we have sustainable development as trans, transversal to everything. And we also have it. We have incorporated the cities and the local governments with the main work of the implementation of the, our policies. I'm sorry if you hear a background. I'm because a background now is because I'm in the airport. Apologies for that. So as I was telling you, we are integrating the different levels of the policies that we have throughout the country so that we are able to really achieve sustainable development and also understanding that Argentina is not free of the global situation where we have a great process of urbanization, which is deepened in, in Argentina. And that is, it has different particularities due to the differences that we have in each local government because we speak from local governments and not cities, because we have very big cities such as Buenos Aires, which is, it has a quarter of the total population, but then we have different municipalities and most of the people live in intermediate cities. So we have around 2,500 local governments. And we need to strive to create tools that, uh, that allow us to make better decisions. And all of these can help us to have different different tools that apply in all of the in all of the local governments, and they can easily implement the actions that we have. Because of course, the local governments are the most important ones, and they are the first in line to apply all of the changes that we have. And they also need to match these with different agendas, like planning planning of the territory, environmental issues. For us, one of the ways that we can take this into action was through the presentation and including the second contribution in the whole country and working with the local governments. We are also doing this with the adaptation mitigation on climate change. And we have different institutionalized actions that have in contact with different organisms and different institutions. First of all, with the government in municipalities. And we try to have also work with local governments and also with FEMEN, which is the advisors, uh, the advisor, advisors group of environmental change. And they take care of all of this. And also we do this through all of these advisors group with, that helps us with the local government. In able to have this incorporation, we have had to, to define what we understand by sustainable city and that we understand the three dimensions of sustainability that ends up changing political policies as well. We also need to include human rights, being inclusive and being just. We need equality in all of this. Again, so just to go into depth, into details about the city, we will 
I will give I will give the microphone to Lucia so she can tell us a little about this. So Lucia, please just go ahead and please go into details. And again, thank you for have, giving me the opportunity to be here today. Well, thank you, Flor. Taking into account all of the context that Florencia just told us, and we want more cities in Argentina to be sustainable, resilient, and inclusive, we have an interdisciplinary group that helps us. We have urban planning, geospatial information, and many different activities that we join with different with different actions from the Ministry of Environment and Sustainable Development and other ministries so that we can create this guide. The guide should be a tool for local governments that is a quick tool, easy to complete, and that, and that each municipality is able to complete it. Okay, so we have now the presentation here. The idea is that it allows cities to assess quickly and efficiently to be able to prioritize. I'm sorry, I'm, I, 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 I don't know if you can go to the next slide, please. So that people can understand better. Very good. Can we go to the next one, please? The next one. So, as I was saying, is a management tool that allows cities to identify and prioritize projects in short, medium, and long term. And also, it allows to involve different stakeholders in the government, because while creating the guide, we need to be in contact with the different areas to be able to complete the whole guide. The idea is that when the guide is complete, you can implement with your own teams. Can we go to the next one, please? Okay, how is it made of? We have a document where we say what a sustainable city is and how to handle the guide and which are the dimensions that we handle in each part of it. And also we have an Excel spreadsheet that is the guide itself. And this is made of uh, technical information about the city, where you do fill in the main information about the city, weather. Then we have each tab per dimension of the sustainable development, climate change, human development, government, and each part of this is made of different subjects. And in each of these subjects, as you see this screenshot, it has different sub information and each part has a score according of how this city accomplishes this. And in the end, you will see a score from the whole city. And from this score, the idea is that municipalities can have lines of action and to know which places they need to reinforce so that they can begin this journey into a sustainable city. So the idea is that we can have goals and when are we going to achieve each one of them? And if these objectives are related to a local action, a local plan, or if they're going to join forces with maybe a, a municipality that is close. So the idea is that when you feel all of this information and a line of action, the municipality can focus on it and work on it. If you want to go to the next slide. Okay, so we started a pilot test in different cities, as you see here. We have seven cities and you see them here also on the map. You can see where they are. They are in all of Argentina. They're in different municipalities. 
they have different realities and different characteristics within them. So right now, the cities are completing the guide and they are making a new document, which is the final document, where they have all of the information, but with more detail. And the idea is that we can see all of these documents in the web page in the ministry so that it serves as an example and incentive for other municipalities to begin this journey and this process towards being a sustainable city. Do you want to go to the last one? And we're going to talk about the next steps. We need to adjust the guide from the exchange that we just had with the cities. Because of course, during all of the filling process, we have had questions from the municipalities and they have told us which indicators or which subjects they thought could be improved or were presented a problem. So we are trying to solve that. We will post the full guides for other municipalities. And we will also have technical advising sessions with municipalities. If the municipalities want to prioritize a subject and if they need some help, the idea is that the Ministry of Environmental and Sustainable Development will help. So, well, and now I don't want to take any more time, but if you have any question, we will see about it. And Steria and Gabriela will tell you about their experience. Thank you so much. Thank you, Florencia and Lucia, for presenting the guide to us. Uh, let us now hear from the city of Cañada de Gomez, presented by the mayor, Stella Clerici, and Gabriela Sabatini, the Eco Club coordinator, about how the guide is supporting the city's uh, planning process. So uh, the floor is yours, Stella, Gabriela. Thank you. Well, good morning. Can you hear us well? My name is Estela. I'm in the major of Cañada de Gómez. We are located in the center side in Argentina, as you saw in the map. We are one of the, we're near of the biggest cities in Argentina, Córdoba. And we are here is the location. And now we will talk about the guide. And the guide has been really, really helpful to OI. Talking about our city, our city is very, very accessible. If you can go back to the other slide, because this is a presentation I need to make. Then Gabby will talk a little bit more about the guide itself. Our city, due to the size, I've been the major for 18 years. I've been reelected five times. And it has some characteristics where we're, where we are characterized by transparency, being sustain, uh, sustainable, and you can check our web page, which is www.cañadagomez.com. Then this is a city that we are very, very interested in the environment. And this is very interconnected with all of the areas. The guide has also been useful for this to go deeper in the relationship that we have with the public and private sector. And this is, you can see this in the web page and diffusion of all of the actions that we take. Sustainability, which is fiscal sustainability, which is something that the guide talks about. This has been a parameter for 18 years to us. And as any economic situation, it is the foundation to be able to talk about other kinds of sustainability. So we have a very balanced and in order municipality from 18 years. 18 years ago, I inherited a different situation completely. Cañada is a very important municipality. 
And it is also important for the local, the municipalities that we have around. And we are example for other municipalities and we are a reference regarding industry and we pay attention to sustainability and environmental impact. We are also a reference regarding health. We have around 160 doctors, both in private and public sector. Many people come here. We are also a reference regarding education. And we have agreement with different universities so that we can have a offer both virtually and in person. And this adds to quality of life. We have a very green location. We have around 47 green areas in the whole city. We have, we have seven that doubles the, the amount of green areas that the World Health Organization asks for so as an average to be able to be a green city or a sustainable city. Without without counting about the space that we have just recovered, that we, which is a place that we want to recover, but also as part of the urban use of areas. So as, as a municipality, we should always take this into account. It is not only the environment, it is the environment related to the need to recovering areas for habitats and urban use and also to work in, integrally and work in a holistic way. And also we need living space because that is very important. And we can consider that when we recover the lake, which was a disaster zone, we have some work and we can recover this space in a holistic manner. Also we, in regards of transportation and mobility, which is something that the guide takes into account we have free transportation for everyone just for many years now. And we just copied the model that is in the Busio city and it goes throughout the city and it is free and also cycling lanes because we are promoting the use of bicycles to be more sustainable. We have, a, we have had an, a strategic plan for 10 years that we created, taking into account the environment, infrastructure, and the needs that we created with, with work that we carried around. So we have an online system to be able to promote uh, participation, constant participation, which has participation of engineers in Cordoba and they created, then they had like an experiment with us that allow us to have constant feedback from neighbors and from people around the municipality. And we can give answers to them. And we are now thinking about applying these to different situations. For example, with things that have to do with secu security, a panic button and protection systems regarding to uh, regarding gender violence for example so we keep finding new applications to this multi digital application that get us to be connected to people and we still develop relationship of, among people so we understand that the guide is, the guide is essential it is completely completely important because it helps us systematize inform information and we can deepen the relationship that we have with the private sector and other, and other national vendors, either private, public. So it is really, really important. And on the other hand, especially for the smaller cities, it's helpful to get things in order, to understand what we are developing, where we can go deeper, and we are going to use it as a framework in the update of our strategic plan that this year it turned 10 years and we will be working in the update. So congratulations about the guide. It is, it is really, really important, especially for the small cities that we don't have so many professionals around. Very good. 
Uh, Bruno, if you want to move to the next slide about the guide. This one. Okay, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the development of the guide. Before the proposal of the environmental ministry, along with the Federation of Municipalities, we started creating the guide with them. I think the most important part here was looking for information. We run into a guide which is very technical and very specific. And this is a moment when we get to know a little bit about the municipality and to see how we have worked. Cañada de Gomez has subsecretaries and we were able to go into each institution and look for information to put it into the guide. But there are also organizations that are private and we had to ask for the information to be provided. So we were able to build some networks to help us to get the information that we needed, but also strengthen the relationship with other institutions. From all of these, and from collaborative work with our institutions, we started looking into ourselves we, to make some introspection, introspection and reflect about the situation of the guide. So I would say here, the work that we did with the ministry was essential because when you work maybe within the municipality, you have a subjective view, but the people from the team before, when we saw the results, they allowed to have a very objective point of view of this. And when this, we started looking at each of the dimensions and making some analysis we define some lines of action because sometimes we know where we where we start with the guide but then when you have like a, a whole uh, span of different actions and you can have a critical view of the weaknesses that's why the scoring is important in the guide if you want to look at this we have the lines of action for example, uh, after the guide, there are things that are more important. For example, we have here to improve the quality of air, to have green areas and solid solid waste. Then as Estela was, was saying, we need to put things in order, the territory. We have a, a need of organizing the use of the areas and also green areas. So also we need to train all of the team. We need to have a transparent management regarding the government. And as we said, Muni Digital is something that helps us to be more transparent. So the, the guide has enabled to have introspection and to also find our weaknesses so we can turn them into strengths. Excellent, thank you. Thank you for having us and for our participation. Uh, we will continue act to actively participate. It's inspiring to see the work that Cañada de Gomez is doing and uh, taking the lead and, and working towards a more sustainable and green uh, path in the future. Uh, so. Let's jump now to Brazil. We are going to hear from Clara Mayer, the Indicators Coordinator from the Sustainable Cities Institute, and how the Sustainable uh, City Sustainable Development Index is supporting local governments across the country. Clara, uh, the floor is yours. Bom dia a todas e todos. Muito obrigada pelo convite. Pra... Good morning, all. Thank you for the invitation to participate today. Could you please? Uh, next slide, please. This, the sustainable uh, development index that we are going to speak about sustainable cities, we had a partner 
with the Sustainable Development Solution Networks, uh, which supports our, we also had the support of the Brazilian Center for the Analysis and Planning, CEBRAP, and also the funding for the City Nova project. And we have the uh, support of the Global Fund for Environmental and also the uh, United Nations Sustainable Cities and also the Sustainable Development Solution Networks and also the Strategic Cities and also the Sustainable Cities and the uh, Federal District uh, Secretariat. Our main goal is to guide the cities in the direction of the sustainable development and making a relationship between the Sustainable Cities Program and the 2030 Agenda. The other goal is to define indicators to compare the cities to generate a movement to change the cities and also define references to achieve these goals to make easy to really uh, go to uh, really have the SDGs and have an integrated vision of the cities in the sustainable development team and using the reference cities and the good practices. So which which were the criteria to the selection of 770 cities. So we have the uh, sustainable cities program, the signatories of the management 2017, 2020, the Brazilian capitals except Brazilia, cities with more than 200,000 voters, cities in metropolitan regions, cities with the goal plan law and contemplating and tackling with all biomes. So we had the indicators of sustainable cities program. We have 260 indicators. This was our basis. And we had challenges because we had to have available data and we had to have confiability and statistical validity. We used recent and updated data and those cities that had uh, just a few data, we had to improve these. The source of data where 98% came from official statistics and this national basis, they are they had other sources that feed them like data suis, IBGE, INEP, and CINIS and other similar sources. And 2% of these indicators, they came from our partners. So we use data from MAP Biomas and the CIEG, which is the Climate Observatory and the data collection came from the Brazilian Center for the Analysis and Planning, CEBRAP. So I will show you now the visualizations, what you have now, what we have available in our page. We have a presentation and we have the whole context, how we created this, how we thought about this, and then we have the classification of the cities. We adopt a method of to have the average of the SDGs and the average of these indicators. We have the SDG and all these indicators, we have to validate the data. And then we have the ranking of the cities. And this is the general classification. We can see the these uh, colorful points. If you click on this colorful uh, classification, you see the SDGs. 
and then you have access to the whole information of all the cities SDGs. And in the map, you can visualize all the SDGs distributed among these 170 cities. We have all the reference values. We have, we have four cities with a very high uh, general classification. We have also the green areas. You can see also on other cities and clicking on the city, you can go into the city page. And you have here on the left-hand side, you can see the SDG, the performance considering every SDG. And then we have our here, the Brazilian cities profiles. You can also search and go directly into each city that you can see here in this graph. And go into the city, you have the a summary, you can see the general punctuation. So this uh, Morungaba in Sao Paulo have a 73.4 of 100. It, it's the first in the general classification. And you have the current uh, evaluation considering every SDG. And here you can also can see the all the indicators considering the SDGs. I can select one SDG and I have the, I can visualize each one on the left hand side, how these indicators are along the years. And I can also download the city report. You can download the report and this report, we have the whole panel, SDG panel and all the SDGs concerning this city and all the values for the last few years selected according to each source. And going on, I will speak about our methodology. We have the explanation, all the calculations we had to do. And this is developed from our Sustainable Development Solution Network, the SDSN. And this methodology, we have how are the indicators since the green part to the red part, we have all the parameters and for every indicator, how we could normalize the data. And on the main page, we have the possibility to download our database. We have to select to download the database. And you also can select to download a table with the city's profiles. You can see a table like this one with all the classification of all the cities with all explanations, how the cities, the indicators, descriptions, how they are calculated. And, and we have all, all the historical uh, series of every city and also the values considering the SDGs and also the color classification. On the first page, you can also download the city's uh, reports according to the city pages. And you can also download the all reports. And this information can be downloaded in this uh, spread, spreadsheet. And you can see the whole 
summary here in this spreadsheet. Here you can see my contacts. We have my two addresses to have access to the index. And thank you very much for your attention. The work that you are doing in, in Brazil with the index and that you are already including 770 local governments in, in the monitoring that you're doing. Um, let's move on now uh, to hear from one of the cities in Brazil that it's utilizing the index and uh, in support of their planning processes. So Luis Ferraro, the project director from the city of Niterói, the floor is yours. Thank you. e a oportunidade para compartilhar um pouco da experiência de Niterói dentro do tema. Thank you very much. It's a huge opportunity. That we are in Niterói, we are in the metropolitan region of the state of Rio de Janeiro. We have more than 500,000 inhabitants. And you have to have the, uh, since the uh, last research that we did, we have a strategic plan that we elaborated. And we observed seven areas with results that are aligned with the SDGs. And we have objectives of uh, long, medium, and short terms from 2013 to 2033. And we have results of the uh, deliveries that we can report through indicators. We have this plan, pluriannual plan, from 2022 to 2025. It's a participative plan. It was elaborated aligned with the strategic planning of the Niterói that we all want. And it's aligned with the SDGs. And this plan is uh, managing the whole budget. And we have an innovation and it's aligned to the sustainable development goals. The population can follow our progress through the plan. Here you can see the program of the sustainable cities. Niterói is a signatory city. It's one of the 770 municipalities that are monitored by the sustainable development index of the cities and our position is 65. So we have a report, transparency, and we are improving always through this program. And this is a very important initiative because we have many projects and not always our indicators of results are organized with the plans. And we have plans using the platforms available in the city. So this is a great partnership that we have with transparency to improve and to use 
the indicators. And you, we have the participation Luis, of the Luis, sorry city. Uh, to interrupt you. The, the sound is really, uh, really uh, low. Can you maybe talk closer to the mic? No se escucha bien. Si puedes hablar más cerca. Gracias. We could see the indicators panel and this indicator panel we are trying to see the index and the development index and what we could be able now i can show you a little bit of our general objective the increase of the water suitability of Jujuba waterfront. We have a management program with the participation of stake, the integration of efforts and the optimization of resources. And as Jujuba is an urban beach so that's it's our general objective to really see the suitability water suitability of the jurujuba waterfront composed by the beaches of san francisco charitas jurujuba adão and eva so we could monitor the access we are uh, treating the sewage system and we use the indicator of the water suitability. And this result indicator, the beach water suitability. So we use the percentage form this in this percentage that you can see the historical a program that started in 2013 and expresses the reality how they affected the environmental quality so we could see the variation along the years and we could really quantify and show in this graph and really to improve the situation seen through the graph what was happening in the environment here is a graph from last year in the city of niterói where we could reinforce one of the indicators that were used. And we have this uh, water suitability in this waterfront. So we have the green areas that were uh, improved the water suitability index, the conservation areas percentage, and the green area percentage. So this brought us opportunities and recommendations. So we have to improve our projects and to really see the results through indicators. And also to have a diagnosis, trying to uh, improve all the windows of opportunities for the implementation of our projects aligned with the global objectives. And also to improve the healthy competitivity with the governments. 
to improve our oriented actions for results and indicators. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Louis. Um, the experience of NIDERO really shows how cities can use the data to improve the impact of local policies. Um, so now we're going to move on to our next session of the webinar, the question and answer. And uh, we want to have an open discussion. And we'll start with some of the questions that uh, were uh, posted post on the on the chat. So I invite all the speakers uh, to come to the uh, screen and uh, we'll have different questions for each of you. So let's start with Clariche. There's a question that was posed there, very technical question, but uh, we would like to hear about uh, how uh, you're working with the index a little bit more. So the question is, do all SDG indicators have the same, the same weight? How would you use how do you see the use of weighted average considering that certain SDG, SDGs and indicators may be more important for different cities? So maybe I give you a uh, second to think about that question, Clarice. Obrigada pela pergunta. Um, as 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 bases, elas foram consideradas. Uh, the bases were considered with our database we have 707 cities with this database and from this with the statistical criteria we establish the differences and the parameters for the green areas and also for the red limited and we had the division with the yellow and the orange we can find all the definitions in the methodology because with the indicators, with the statistical method, how we could insert these limiers that we can go from the green to the red. We have the criteria, statistical criteria, and the whole work of defining these, the sustainable series together with SDSN in the whole methodology, how the averages, the indexes, and their normalization were uh, done by SDSN. And they use these indexes and they work with different countries, with European countries, and they have a consolidated program. So we had the partnerships to implement the methodology that they have been developing with other countries and other cities in the world. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have a question now. now okay, my uh, and it's about a barrier. So you talked a little bit about that when, when you were presenting, but we would like to learn a little bit more about what barriers and challenges did the ministry find in the process of designing and launching the guide? And how did you overcome them? Uh, so, ¿qué barreras y desafíos eh, tuvieron que enfrentar en el ministerio para diseñar Which la guía? barriers and obstacles did you face to be able to implement the guide? Well, thank you, Mariana. Well, mainly the challenges that we faced is that whenever we wanted the guide to be easy to use, and you know, for the municipalities that every day receive queries and that they need to pay attention to urgent matters. The main challenge was to be able to have all of the dimensions, you know, and climate change, human development, use of territory and government with the least possible number of indicators, but that the indicators actually reflected the sustainable development so it's try to try to have less indicators. So that was the main challenge that we have. But when the, in the articulation with different, different areas of the ministry, we were able to solve it, to have a guide as complete as possible, but had, that had all of the information that we needed. between English and, and Spanish. Uh, a question for uh, Gabriela and Mayor Stella. 
uh, about the lines of action that uh, you presented. You presented a little bit about the different lines of actions that you ident identified with the guide. Can you give us a little more detail about uh, priorities that the city has identified that, and maybe push you to like talk about uh, specific projects that maybe you have identified using the guide uh, to operationalize the, the, strat the strategies? Thank you. Um, cuando trabajaron con la guía, ¿qué, qué líneas de acción y qué prioridades when, when you worked with the guide, what lines of action did you identify and if you could give us more details? Yes. Well, to have all of the information about three areas, we know we have an average of 14 trees per block, but we are trying to put together information with the students of high schools to know the exact location, kind of tree, if they are local trees or what kind of trees they are. So also everything that has to do with recovering the Cañada green water area, this runs through a municipality that is 30% from east to west we, what we did is we made a dam that allows us to recover the water there and to make it more useful. We are really, really working hard to recover this area, both in infrastructure, recovery of urban use. And we really want to strengthen this green area that runs four kilometers well, eight if we want, if we count both sides in the city. Talking about the industrial park, we are still working with a technological pole so that we are able to strengthen the industry 4.0 with an environmental view and with a specific space for uh, nursery, also taking care of gender and we are also training people in hard sciences and in gender equality. So for example, we have a project in training in, in having maintenance for machines only for women, and that is having great success. What else, Gabi? Well, also we have something about waste management. For many, many years, we have had separate waste recollection and now we are also separating that at the point of delivery we are having green green deliveries and we also exchange you know like paper or plastic for coupons so we are working very very hard in solid waste management and we have an agreement to incorporate two other cities in our waste management program to be able to have a regional view in this subject. So we want to organize this with two other municipalities that are nearby and they are smaller. We also have some actions that have to do with sustainable energy. Well, yes, we are trying, we are starting to go into energy saving and energy that is sustainable. This is, we are having, for example, solar panels in this office, which used to be the mailing office. And we are also working with factories in the industrial parks so that they start turning towards renewable energies and try to inject and also put this energy back into the national network. And we're also working in trainings for municipalities because many, many times they lack updating. So the guide is also helping us and making it easier for us to have some links that favor updating all of the secretariats and, and offices. Yes, and also we have 
uh, water treatment plant, and we are constantly working on this to lower the arsenic levels that went from 0.5 to 0.3. We have not achieved 0.10, which is what the WHO advises. And we are also having a broadening of the, of, the, of the water treatment plant so that we can have more and more more and more water that is clean of fecal adhesives. So for this to work, we need to make this bigger. We also have 100% of sewers installed. Excellent, thank you. It's a lot of work that you're doing. Uh, it's impressive. Um, we are at time now, and I hope the discussion has been useful and we will follow up with with you uh, if there have been questions that we did not have enough time to answer. So some key takeaways before uh, we go, I think um, the two frameworks and the methodology to gather the information in the countries are very different. One is looks more like it's more centralized than the other one. Uh, the Argentinian one is more bottom up with information gathered at the local level, but the objectives are similar to improve local management based on comprehensive multi-sectoral information and to select uh, strategic projects to advance the sustainability agenda. And it's clear that both methodologies have advantages and disadvantages and that the use of uh, different kinds of frameworks largely depends on resources for application and availability of data. Um, but uh, both approaches are uh, very interesting and give us uh, an spectrum of different ways in which different countries and cities could tackle this evidence-based decision-making. So the Urban Shift series will continue in February uh, 2022 with a discussion on the WRI report towards a more equal city. And we ask you to please sign up for our newsletter and connect with us on social media. You can see that on the slide. Uh, the different ways in which you can connect with us. Thank you very much again for joining our webinar and have a great day.